Over the years, CLIs have become more and more popular. When you look at big players in the space, such as Rosell, GitHub, Netlify, PlanetScale, all of those offer some sort of CLI that allows you to interact with part of their services. But how does CLI auth actually work? How do you know which user is at their terminal trying to log in? And how do you connect that to your authentication providers such as Clerk or NextAuth or any of the other providers in the space. So let's look at some diagrams and talk about how API Auth works. Then I'll show you a demo of it working and then we can talk about the code behind of how that actually works from A to B. So here we have a diagram talking about how the CLI process works and how Auth kind of works in that space. So what happens is a user will spin the CLI either using a command such as npx vercel login or they'll install the CLI first and then they'll use the command vercel login for an example. This opens up a port on a local host. It will be a port that is available at the time and then it will open a website to a specific URL. In this example, we're using app slash auth slash CLI. Now that could be James Perkins slash app slash auth CLI or your app slash app slash auth slash CLI. At this point, this is where web app auth happens. So the user either has the login or is already logged in with a valid session. They then confirm a code that is provided through the terminal to the application. Now this happens in this specific URL. It will be params that are added to the URL. The user then confirms the code and then you mint a new key or token. So that could be anything in the space. So whether you are minting a API key or you're minting a token, that key is then, or token is then sent back to this page. And this page is essentially just waiting for this to happen. Once that happens, it redirects the user back to local host and then gives the key to the CLI, which is then written to the machine. And at the same time, when this redirect happens, where it sends the key back, it will then send them to a success page that just says something like, your CLI has been successfully authenticated. You can close this window. Or if they do happen to cancel at any point, this redirect will happen and it will be just a cancellation page and they can close and restart the CLI process. So this is how it kind of works at a high level, just to give you an idea. So let's just run through this again. They listen on this port, they open to a page, they do some sort of authentication with an auth provider. The user confirms the code on the screen. You mint a new key, you send that back, it gets written to the machine somewhere. And then at that point, the key exists and then they can send it with every request via your CLI and then your API or whatever you're using to interact with will be looking for a specific header and that header can then be used to interact with a service or approve that service or whatever it might be. But how does that actually work in a real kind of world situation? Like how does that go from A to B? So let's look at how that works in a demo and then I'll talk about the demo code itself as well. So here I am at a terminal and we're going to use mpx at unkey CLI demo login and we're going to hit that. And then you'll see that this page is now opened where I need to sign into my authentication provider. And if we head back to the terminal as well, you'll see here's a confirmation code. And if something goes wrong, you can actually copy and paste this into your URL just in case it doesn't open correctly, etc. So now I need to authenticate. So let's go ahead and go to Google and let me sign in. And now we're seeing this confirmation code here. It says, does this code here match the one in our terminal? So if I go and look and say, yes, this looks the same, I can click confirm code here and you'll see login successful. You can now return to your CLI. Now, if I go back to the here into my terminal, you can see that this has happened. Then from our actual home directory, if we do LS minus A to see all of our hidden fields, and now I have this dot unkey here, which is attached to the user of Clerk. So basically my login is now attached to this API key in unkey. And now those two things are connected. So now I know exactly who is doing what with an API key. So how does this code actually work behind the scenes? What is being done here? So there's two pieces. First, there's a web application and there's also the CLI. So let's look at the example code, which will be available in GitHub that you can look at yourself. Let's look at that and see what it looks like. So here we are in the code itself. There's just a few things that you need to know. There is a source directory here, which holds the actual CLI. And then there's this web app that holds the web app application. Now this would obviously be your web app in general. The CLI in this example is obviously just a node server. Essentially what we're doing is creating a file name called .unkey and we're writing it 
based upon what happens. So we're basically grabbing the home directory from the from the operating system, and then we're writing this file with the data that is returned from our application. You can see kind of how this works down here. So what we're doing is we have program.name, which is just obviously the description, and then we have program.command login, which is the login service. And that is essentially a description, obviously is to authenticate with our CLI. So the first thing we actually do is create a server and then we have the port that's associated with said server. So we have an auth promise here and this auth promise essentially does what we're waiting for, which contains the API key from our web application. So what it's doing here is looking for two things. First, it does this get request and this get request either looks for a canceled state. And if it doesn't have a canceled state, we know that the user didn't cancel and it's been successful. Uh, otherwise, we just write a 405 and we just assume something terrible happened. So what we're looking for is either it was canceled and we can just end here. Otherwise, we'll grab the data from the query params and we'll resolve that as successful. So the redirect that we use from the web app is this 1.7.0.01 and then the port that we create when the server is spun up. We then have this code that we create and then we create this confirmation URL, which is essentially just the client URL, so wherever that might be, yourapp.com slash all slash devices, whatever it might be. And then we add in the code and the redirect to this. So the redirect is obviously this redirect here, and then the code is what's spun up from here. We then export that out so that the user knows what they should be confirming. And then if something does go wrong and it doesn't open, you can also just use this and copy and paste it to your URL. We then just essentially start the spinner in the process and then we use that auth promise that we talked about up here and we just essentially wait for that auth promise to resolve. And then we write this config auth data based upon what is returned from this auth data. Then if it's successful, obviously we'll just be like, yep, it's successful and you can view this here. Otherwise we'll do one of two things. We'll catch the error message. It'll either be authentication has failed or the authentication was canceled by the user and that is the entire CLI process. Essentially all we're doing is waiting for this auth promise to finish. Once it's finished then we know whether or not they were successful or not and we just send the confirmation URL based upon that. But how does that actually work from the client side code? So we have this auth slash devices and it's just a page here and it has a bunch of checks in it but we need to worry about this page section. So essentially what we do is we look for the search parameters which should have the code and the redirect in it and we use these to drive the entire application. So then once we have those, we can actually look at how the page is laid out. So essentially all we do here is we ask them to look at the code on the screen and then they have two buttons. One is a verify button, which is essentially just the confirm code. And the other one is the cancel button. When they click the verify button, what we do is we take this code and redirect and we set the loading to true, which allows the spinner to show. And then we make a request to unkey here. So this API slash unkey, which we'll look at in a minute. And then we wait for the response to come back. Once the response is okay and we have a JSON, we then create the redirect URL. So the redirect here is res.redirect. And then we put in the code and the key here. And then we do this redirect fetch. Then we set the loading to false, set the success to true. And then at that point, we then show the success page. So as you can see here, we're just using use state here to show this. And if you look above here, we have the success right here. So essentially once it's set to success, we'll show this screen. Otherwise, if it was canceled, we'd show this screen, which is just the difference is login canceled and login successful. Once it's been redirected, then the user gets back into the CLI and the CLI consumes it. But the API call here essentially does a route. All the route does is actually make a request to unkey to create a new key. And what we do is we use the API ID that you want. We add a prefix in this example, it's just CLI demo, but that could be CLI or your app CLI or whatever you want to prefix your API key with. And then we add the owner ID, which is the clerk user ID in this example, as the owner ID. So now those are linked together so we know who owns what key. And then we just return that back as a response. Now, of course, if they were to cancel it, we would just cancel it and we would just do a response here. And we just essentially just set the body to cancel is true. 
So that's how CLI auth works. And there was a demo using Unkey as an example to power your CLI products. If you did enjoy this video, click right here. There'll be another one that will drive some sort of algorithm from YouTube telling you some sort of cool thing that I've created. And of course, if you're not subscribed, click right here.